the CGI on these villains is from 2006. So if she doesn't walk, the film doesn't walk. I didn't, I didn't like the film, man. I've got to keep it real with you. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like this film, man. Um, this film is boring. I've got to just start there. Now, is this film trash? Is this film a complete pile of garbage, class A brick ass trash? No, there's some really good elements in this film. There's some really good elements in this film, but you see, a key thing about when you make a film is structure. There's no points in having good bits or good elements if you don't put the elements together in something that has a good structure to it, a good structure to it. So keeping it a stack, my honest view within this is it's telling a very large story, a very big, massive story. And I'm not sure how the regular guy can connect with the characters and with the story because the key thing, if the, the first thing a story has to do for any film you're doing, specifically when you're dealing in the kind of superhero world and so forth, superhero fantasy is how can you get this crazy, mad stuff that is all worldly and how can you bring it down and make it grounded so regular guys can connect with it? Because I'll keep it real with you, bro. I'm I'm a sci-fi merchant. <laughs> I'm a sci-fi merchant and I'm a fantasy merchant. And watching this. I don't know, I don't know what the hell was freaking going on. And even if I even if I at the end of the day somehow knew what was going on, I didn't give a crap. <laughs> because I didn't care about the characters. Now, that's not to say that because there was because I'll tell you what the major issue with this is. Because there is one major issue that people are missing, and I think this because it's such a problem, it affects everything. But some of the actors were good. Brian Terry Henry, I think his quality is, is, is really good. The Richard Madden, of course, he's always, always good. The who plays um, Icarus, the guy, um, Fast Horse, but uh, I think Brian Terry Henry. The girl who is um, sort of like caused to be like a young girl for her whole life, she was good as well. I like the um, um, Indian character, I've forgotten what the character name is, he was in this film, Stu, Stuba with um, Dave Batista, I think. Um, he was good. So there's some good, there's some good acting. Angela Jolie, well, she was fine, she was fine. Um, Barry Keoghan, I think, she, it was good. And even um, the girl who is deaf. And you know that there's a name that I'm missing here, but I'll, 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 I'll get to her. But as I was watching it, I was like, okay. <sighs> okay, look, let's, let's, let, let's deal with the two main issues. I'll tell you the main issue, but I'll never do it with one of the issues, and I'll tell you what the biggest issue is. One of the issues. A hero is really as good as your villain. I'll, I'll use this as an example, Halo. Anybody who plays Halo, why is Halo so good? Oh yeah, Master Chief is cool. The gameplay is cool. The weapons you use are cool. The story and the lore is cool. But what really makes Halo set it apart from a Gears of War and, and all these, these other FPSs or Doom? The villains. The villains are so well defined. They are so well done. They look so cool. And the design of the villains is it's it's so detailed, it's so specific, it it gives the villains an identity. So it's really it's it's really makes the world a lot more richer. The CGI on these villains is from 2006. Yeah, yeah. The the CGI here, bro. I was like, you, you, it's 2021. We are two months away from 2022. You can't accept CGI like that. That is basement level CGI. That's like, that's like literally you just you you just grabbed an animator from the way and say, look look I beg just render this thing my 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 friend. They, 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 they literally guns and and they recently got an animator was selling fruits on the road. They got me and say, bro, give us some basement level monsters on Microsoft Windows ninety eight, and then put that stuff out there. So I keep it real with you that that. I was watching it, I was like, because my brain shot off. Every time there was an action scene, my brain just went, because the seizure was just nonsense. The action was just so bland. I was like, man, I, I can't roll with this, bro. I can't. So that was problematic. And like, those are a major part of your story are your villains. So 
Nah, I mean, I, w I wasn't... Because again, like, the villain is key. Because look at Captain America and the Red Skull. Look at Iron Man and... Um, as it's Obsidian, the uh, what's it called? The Jeff Bridges dude. The villain is a very, very key thing. Even if I didn't know, I didn't like how it was written, Thanos. Look at what Thanos looked like and then the, the Avengers. Um, but Marvel have always had issues with, with villains. But the villain on villains here, bro, I mean, it was out of it. So, what's the major issue here? What is the major issue here? And, and I'll tell you what it is. Because I, I was say, look, I mean, this film feels boring. It feels dry. But this, but this story... There is potential in this story, and it tells a very kind of wide-spanning story that's like, whoa, that's, that is, that, that's very expansive. So what's the issue here? <clears throat> Hashtag honesty. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Hashtag honesty. Gemma Chan. I get it. She's beautiful. She's super attractive. She's lovely. She's sexy, blah, blah. She's like every white man's wet dream, because, you know, white guys are obsessed with Asian women and so forth. So I get it. I understand. I understand. But I'm just here just to try and give you the real. Shh. There are a lot of issues with, I think there are script issues. I swear there are issues with the villain and the CGI and somewhat of the structure of the film, the way that the film was structured that could have, maybe the pacing could have been a little bit more short, tighter and better, maybe trim some fat here and there just to make it more streamlined. But I think one of the biggest issues, because I was thinking about it, thinking about it, Gemma Chan. Because I said to myself, okay, what if you put a better actress here? Same lines, the exact same lines, and give it to a better actress. You might get a better film. It will still have issues, because you still have the issues with Vince, but you would get a better film because she is literally, she is, she is the, she is the key to the film. She is the through line of the film because she plays a, the most pivotal role in the film. Obviously, Richard Madden's character has a key role, Sam Hayek. Although I have key roles, but I think her role, I feel, is the most important with regards to this story. So if she doesn't work, the film doesn't work. And she doesn't work because, bruh, she's not a great, she, she's, she's not a good actress. <laughs> she's not a good actor. She isn't a good actor. And I think because she's not a good actor, her scenes feel very stale. You, there's no sense of emotion. You have zero connection with her character, nothing at all. Because, and the issue is that you know how bad she is because of the people around her. Like the little girl who plays like this, the small young girl, she's so much of a better actor than her that it really shows up. And especially when now Richard Madden now comes into and Brian Terry Henry comes and you just see just superior acting, it just shows just how bland because her acting is it's one dimensional, it's one D, <laughs> it's one dimensional. and. You can't hide it. You can't hate it. You can't hate it. You cannot have a one-dimensional actress as your freaking lead. I'm sorry, you can't have that. So that I just think was the issue because at times in the film I was like, bro, like, wait, what? Like, what's going on? Like, where is this going through? But look, let's even address the whole thing with the critics. First off, word of advice. This is just just a key advice to you. You shouldn't judge whether or not you want to go to a film by the critics. But you see, but, but wait, there's, there's, there's a little thing that I need to get, get you on it, but just, just hold on. Whether you want to see a film or not, you shouldn't go to critics' consensus. But, I'll tell you whether there's a but. So, whatever the Rotten Tomatoes is, it doesn't matter. That's just what other people think. Choose a critic who shares your kind of views towards film. Now, it won't be 100%, but who is closer aligned with you with how you view films and go by them because here's the thing not everyone is rich not everyone has the money not everyone has the time to go and see every single film so if there's a critic you know who is good who you trust and who aligns with your films and says bro this film is bad don't waste your time wait till it comes out on video or netflix don't waste your time you know because here's the thing for me is that i didn't even need to view a critic to view because i already knew that i wouldn't like this film based off of the trailer so this is the trailers. I, I knew that from the trailers. I know this thing looks. Look, this thing looks boring. The action looks stale. This thing does not look dynamic at all. But I was like, you know what? Before I can do a review on this, let me actually see the film so I can actually fully judge it. And seeing the film, this this film is exactly what I thought it would be from the trailer. Absolutely exactly. It's not always like that because sometimes it can be different because the Reloaded film was much better than the freaking trailer. Um, same thing with the Matrix as well. 
and Revolutions. The trailer for Revolutions was far better than the actual film. But for this, the trailer and how I viewed the trailer was exactly what this, this, this film was. So don't go via whatever um, other guys are saying, man. But look, man, ah, bro. But with regards to the critics, though, I think they are right on this. This is not. This isn't. See, see, this, see. This isn't the worst MCU film. This, because I was thinking of saying, this is better than Iron Man two, Iron Man three, Thor two, and that's about. It. So this might be the fourth worst MCU film. So it's it's, it's better than Iron Man two, Iron Man three, Thor two. Because Thor 1 is better than this. I didn't like Ragnarok. Ragnarok is better than this. <laughs> you know, I didn't like Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is better than, than this. And this doesn't come close to the three Captain Americas, Iron Man 1, Avengers. I'll be real with you. I really didn't like Infinity War. <laughs> From, I'll talk with you. My view towards Infinity War, this, it's all good. See, maybe Infinity War, see, now, nah, Infinity War just, it's not a huge, but Infinity, Infinity War only slightly beats this because of how good Thanos looked. Even if his character was crap, how good he looked. And he had the Captain America scene, he had the Black Panther scene, and the way basically there were some iconic scenes in it. I, I didn't like the film, but there were iconic scenes. There's not a single. The only thing, me, the only thing I liked about this was um, the Indian character. Um, um, his his the Indian character was actually was pretty funny. His valley was, was was pretty funny as well. That and there was some good acting. There was some good acting. Like again, Brian Tyler Henry is always really good. I liked the I think it's Drake, the guy who plays Drake, the Irish guy. He was good. So there was some good acting here, but there wasn't just a single memorable scene from this. Basically, there was there was nothing memorable I took from the film. Like literally, as soon as the film ended. Like, I've, I've pretty much forgotten about everything that happened in the film. So, you see, that's what, you, you should really listen to me. It's just, I'm, I'm just half of I'm just together that I watch these films. But if you say, okay, you have a, what, do you recommend me going to watch this thing? I, what, and this is just me. I would say, wait until this comes out on Netflix. I don't think this is worth going out to go and watch. So, I think I would be saving you money. Because again, look, that's the whole thing. You may watch it, you may like it. I'm just thinking that I think most people may find this a bit boring. Because, yes, there's humor. There's not that much humor. The first half of it is... Too, <laughs> the first half of this film, bruh, it's tough. The second half is, is, is a lot better. But the first half, bruh, it drags. <laughs> it drags, you know. So, I don't know that I can really recommend it to your, your boys, man. So, I think all in all, man, um, bruh, if I'm creating this, man, I'm gonna have to give this a. I'll give this a classy, classy brick, classy brick, classy brick. Because I mean, it's not because it's, when you get it to class B and class, that's when you're total trash. I think this is a pretty bad film, but not awful. Like for me, I just like I, I didn't like this film. <laughs> you know, I I just I just like it. It has some good. It's not awful. It's not hor It's not horrible. That's like, Classy break, you have some uses. Still a break, but you have some uses. We're not getting into the classy and classy, then you, you really have hardly any use. But so it's a classy break. You know, it's 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 not awful. It's not the end of the world, man. But um, I didn't I didn't like the film, man. I've got to keep it real here. I didn't I didn't I didn't I didn't like this film, man. You know, and I just think that um, I still feel that you could do a really good film based off of this story, but you have to have a much better lead. You've got to rejig the story, and you've got to have better villains. I mean, those villains were trash. I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry, those villains were trash, bro. Like that CGI. It's for 2021. That's some. That's is some basement level CGI, man. Like the vid. Comment below. Subscribe. Stay black.